Welcome to Pagan Crafting. I'm your host, Kara. Today we're going to make Egyptian and Moon pendulum boards. Our Egyptian pendulum board is also used for my bone and trinket raven casting set as well. We are going to explore the Egyptian pagan hieroglyphics and symbols of the ancient times. Join me today and let us have some fun with pagan crafting. Supplies that are needed today are a cutting board from the dollar store, six inch discs, I got these off of Amazon, super inexpensive for both, graphite paper, this is your new best friend, a sharper ballpoint pen, preferably red, and some liner pens. And a ray I'm bringing out my arsenal my friends of my metallics and my color shifts we want some finer tip brushes for today as well I'm not gonna bore you with too much here what I did I went ahead and I designed a little board on Canva I got to do it for free on Canva and here are some examples now this is one of them we're going to be using here today of the past present and future i've been playing around with this design for a couple days i left out the center here because i want to do an egyptian eye of Ra in the center so i took out the pentacle out of the center here are some other diagrams that if people wish to use i might work on and work on those ones later this one's for the four quarters of each of the seasons and this is for a casting board that I'm working on. There's a little sneak peek of some power words that you could also use for your own casting or your own pendulum boards. Little sneak peek, I'm gonna be bringing those ones out here at the end of this month. Now this is a board you just saw me design there on Canva. I'm not plugging in Canva. Uh, they're not paying me to do this. It's just, an, they're an incredible website to use and it's free if you'd like. So I just cut out around the edges best you can. You still want to leave a line around the edge. I don't want to get any paint on my other board, but I need a harder surface to do this on. A little piece of tape to secure what you're doing down. Now the darker part is going to go downwards. That's your graphite paper. Now this stencil paper is amazing. It goes on wood like a hot dog. It is so good. A little bit for the bottom too. Now, don't forget Kara, there we go. I always like to make sure I use like a red or pink when I do the outline. It's an old uh, trick I learned years ago. It lets me know where I've been and where I need to go. And there it is. Beautiful. The graphite is a lot better than like a thermal stencil carbon paper or carbon paper. Carbon paper doesn't really work that well and it's quite smudgy versus a graphite uh, paper does not smudge out on you. And it works for so many different surfaces highly 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 suggested Ooh, the unveiling my friend ready are you ready to check this out oh it is so easy just take your time that's why you can choose and go over pick any type of font that you'd like 
Now this is a pigment liner. I'm using a 0.5 to do my lining for my lettering. Now I am, I'm a little picky with these pens because they, it doesn't bleed into this type of wood. Even if you do a heavy amount of sand, like these surfaces are so sanded. This is, would be up to like 400 grit sandpaper if you really took the time to do so. And these pens, surprisingly, do not bleed onto the wood. The only thing is you cannot clear coat it or use a very thin finish unless you burn it over first. So you have to give it a quick torch, not to discolor it, just a quick torch. It seals in the inks. Special trick for you there, my friend. Now I will say that a, a Sharpie does bleed on this, which I found out the hard way and it was quite sad this is actually my second attempt this board my first one i outlined the big rings on the outside with my sharpie and sad to say sad to report it didn't work out very well and it was horrible and all the lines bled out you can see all my mistakes and uh i had to like let it go so I'm just gonna paint the bottom of this because you can't see it. <laughs> you can paint the bottom of it like all black and then no one's gonna be the wiser. Like, oh, a finished project. Yes, yes it is. It's a finished piece. So I'm gonna rock the little moons. It may not be in the exact order, no comments needed, of the moon phases, but I thought it would just look cool coming around it. So watch what I'm going to do here. We're going to have some fun. I have to go across. I'm so symmetrical. I have to do one on one side, one on the other. Sorry, man. I remember. <laughs> oh, just a little, little, little crescent. So cute. good quarter here yeah now you can paint this pendulum board before I made this video with these little wood pendulum boards before I ordered these I did attempt air dry clay polymer clay transfer it on with a Mod Podge glue and I'm telling you I destroyed them all and then once I got it to transfer on, I was so well chuffed with myself. I started painting them and it looked like a grade three kindergarten and painted it. So <laughs> back to wood, which I know I'm a woodworker. I know wood, I can paint on wood. Now after I have the set piece centered, the template centered, I'm going to leave about an inch and a half of on the outskirts around the edges because I have plans for that later. Taking your time again with the graphite paper, you don't need to push very hard when it comes to wood. Now I'm using a cutting board I got from the dollar store, it cost me like $4 Canadian and it was really inexpensive. It is such a hard, hard wood. It is going on absolutely beautifully. If you make any mistakes or you go over it double time, you're going to be racing away the graphite lines later after you're done. Starting off with a U-chat in the center, I'm going to have the Eye of Ra, Eye of Horus. I'm going to be putting in a scarab. The vulture the lion and the owl the onk sun spirit the Cobra I'm 
I'm going to be using all my metallic paints. I haven't brought, brought out anything as gorgeous as those colors yet on this channel, so I think it's about time we give them respect where due. Let us have some fun. Let us do some painting. Ooh. Look at my metallics. They're going to be gorgeous to paint with. Now I have everything all inked with our pigment liner. And painting over top of these with a water-based paint, they will not run this type of pigment liner. I highly suggest that brand. Now the Egyptian Sacred Scarab. What a beautiful scarab indeed. The scarab beetle sign, the Kepe, was also the sign of the god Capri. This is one of the solar deities, his name derived from the Egyptian verb to become or to happen. Meanings that seem to originate in the ancient Egyptians belief that the scarab actually laid its eggs on the ball of dung it would roll before it. The scarab were also used by the Egyptians in the form of the heart amulet worn by mummies on their chest to protect against evil. The scarab would also hold in his bottom two legs, the copic jar with the heart in it. It was sacred and to cross over into the afterlife. As you know me, even my color choices that I choose, everything has a meaning. So if you wish to work on your board, break down the color meanings too and what uh, correspond with each symbol or creature that you decide to paint on your board. The Ankh, lined with copper and painted in red to symbolize the sun. The Ankh is one of the ancient Egypt's most important symbols and one of the most flexible as well, meaning life. But it also symbolized the breath of life, the elements would sustain life, like water and food. Even though it did portray an offering as a stream of water, the powerful scepter in the Pharaoh's hand, the upper loop of the symbol believed to represent the sun. And our next one we have here is painting the owl. Owl I used to use white, like the snowy owl. The owl represents the sound, the sound M. I chose the snowy owl because that represents my mother as well as my daughter, a best friend, and myself. It was all our favorite owl. Spirit, or means double. The hieroglyph is bilateral sound ka, raised by a pair of arms, or known as the endogram, represents one's ka, or spiritual double. The manifestation of spirit was believed the Egyptians continued the existence after death. Its outreach arms received the offerings made to the deceased. Our next one we have here is the lion. That stands for the symbol L. In Egyptian, the lion sign was pronounced Ru, but also represents the L sound, the L sound in four names, such like Cleopatra. Using the gold here, and I use some bronze brownish gold for the different lowlights for the shadow effects along the lion's body. I also painted the lion's face in the brownish metallic too. It just really warmed it up. Bringing in a few tones of colors on each piece, it, it just stands it out, pops it out, gives a little bit more three-dimensional look than a 2D sticker. Even the metallics uh, blend quite well. And the sun, the sun disk. The sun is one of the few hieroglyphics that only has the ideograph function. Pronounced Ra, the sun appears in the depictions of the great solar deity Ra, but also indicates the aspect of life and the passage of time, and found in the words year, 
day and season. Bringing in the vulture here, stands for the letter A. The sign of the vulture is used as the letter roughly equivalent to A. It appears in the spelling Tutankhamun, the famous Egyptian pharaoh. Also the outreached arm on a half bend with the palm and the thumb up is also stands for the letter A. But I thought the vulture would look just a lot cooler on my board definitely than just in the arm chilling out our next up here we have is the letter J for the Cobra this sign is pronounced as a harder D than the sign of the hand. Think of those J sound in the word judge. And the cobra here being a snake, I decided to paint her pink with some lapis lazuli and some aquamarine highlights adornments on her chest. Because who's a pretty snake she is. Doing some little touch-ups of some blue on this scarab, darkening up the blue now that it's dried out. And I'm seeing, hmm, yeah, I'm going back. I'm going to do little touch-ups on the onk, a little highlight there, a little shine. And I'm gonna go back to the snake here. I'm gonna put a little highlights of purple. Everything else has two-toned on this. Instead of just leaving the, the pink, it is a color changer. It goes from pink to rose, like a gold. But uh, I think the purple is uh, need a little bit extra love there. Throwing down some highlights again on the scarab. Feeling that. Ooh, now for my next part here. The, the U chat. The Yu Chat, also known as the Eye of Ra or Eye of Horus. Now I started off with the black sparkly paint and it when I did my first line, it was quite thin. So what I did is I added some regular acrylic black paint to it. And when it dries, hopefully I'll still have my sparkles in there. Now the eye of Horus is the stylized and all-seeing eye of the god Horus who is considered to be a powerful amulet against evil spirits as well as a good luck charm. Some say it's represented by three gods and one goddess. Horus, Ra, Orias, I believe, and Ma'at. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments below. It's been a while since I looked at my Egyptian history. Apologize if I am incorrect. Rocking in some gorgeous, gorgeous electric blue. I like this eye in the center to be stunning, outstanding. A centerpiece. I decided not to color each ring it just looked too elementary when I painted some prototypes, far too elementary, and it didn't, it just didn't look good. So I'm going to stand out each piece of symbol or glyph around it with some cool paint. So hopefully I achieve that today. Bringing in some very light green, some apple green. And just taking my time using my finest brush that I have. And just blending it in back and forth. If you make any mistakes and you go over your black, 
let it dry for a couple minutes and then go back again and just line it line touch up your black for your around your eye and you won't see it at all so uh, have no fear if you go over your pupil a little bit bringing the flakes from the bottom upwards sorry my hand i can't show you i tried angling my hand so you could see it and it didn't work out quite the same so i had to go back in with some green and just do a little bit more blending but that's what's cool about painting eyes you want lots of lots of lines And now I'm just going back in with the black, as I said, and just touching up some parts so you can where I went over. And you can't even tell. Nope. Just having little mistakes here. Just absolutely no worries at all. I have some white, sparkly, metallic. So I'm definitely going to be hitting the pupil too, or the, the white of the eye. Now the pupil, I'm going to be coming in straight up and down. I'm going to dab it with the paint and I'm going to come straight up and down for the dots of the eyes. Don't angle it. It will be a bit of a bubble. Let it dry that way. And it'll look even cooler. And you can change the look of the eye, whether you want a little more mysterious or angry or a little bit more neat, depending on how you want the eyelid to sit. You can play around with that too. And just touching up little spots, fine tuning it with my very, very, very fine brush now. And there we have a unique pendulum board or what I'm going to be using this one for is my casting for my Raven Oracle for my bones and trinket set. I'm so excited. I'm going to be charging these up on my altar. I'm going to be using these boards in a couple days. I'm pretty stoked here. If you want to download these templates for these pendulum and casting boards, you can go to my Etsy store, Pagan Crafting. Details in the description down below as well as a 10% off coupon for you. There you'll find both these templates plus more that I'm working on right now. I should have them up by the time this video airs. Thank you so very much for chilling out with me today. Hit that like button if you like this video. Subscribe. Ring the bell so you know when the next Pagan Crafting video comes out. Have yourself a magical day.